Here we go. All ready. You are looking live. It's sold out MetLife Stadium where today the 16 and 0 and playoff bound New York Giants will be taking on the 0 and 16 New York Jets. And why are the New York Jets 0 and 16? Because they suck. <laughs> Man, that never gets old. Oh, I got to move the chair for my buddy Rainy. Hold on, hold on, buddy. Oh, I'm squashing you. Hold on, hold on. Oh, okay, Rainy's here. We can begin. <laughs> Welcome to the Gridiron. Anybody out there, anybody out there at all is going to spend a little bit of time with me here this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wherever anybody's going to spend any time watching the replay this once again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jersey guys in the house. Hey, what's up, brother? <laughs> Going to try to go about 30 minutes here tonight. Shoot my mouth off for about 30 minutes. Anybody got anything to say like the Jersey guys? Please feel free. Fire away. Throw in the chat box. I usually try to check them on the chat box like every five or ten minutes or so. So as soon as I see something in there, I try to respond to it as fast as I can. So please feel free. Fire away. Most also, I said, you know, instead of me just rambling on for half an hour, 45 minutes or whatever, it's just nice to talk to another Giant fan. So please feel free. Fire away. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, it's um I mean if you go two and six, I mean, mm. you know, uh because you figure, you know, we got a lot of winnable games coming up, but I mean if we can't beat the Jets, you know, we're gonna go on the road, you know, we're gonna beat the Raiders, and you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, those we got the Cowboys, you know, then we have to play the Commanders again, we gotta play the Eagles twice, so you know, I mean, cause if you figure what, if we lose this, we'll be two and six, right? So, I mean, if we lose three more games, we'd have nine. We're going to be, we're going to be a wild card team in eight and nine. Hmm, I don't know. You know, there's not a lot. Although there is not a lot of teams taken off. You know, I, I think I saw somebody, a, um, a stat or, or whatever in uh, one of the Facebook groups I'm in. It said after, since the Bucks lost, the Giants are only one game out of the wild card. I mean, it's a, you look at like the South, it's a bunch of teams. I mean, they're like, Woo. Then you look in the what the West, right? You got the 49ers who are starting to seem like they're coming down to earth a little bit. Then you got the Seahawks, but after that, I mean, right, with the Cardinals and the Rams, you know, and then you look at the uh, you got um well the Vikings did win, but I mean, you know, you got the Lions, right? But then between the Packers, the Vikings, and the Bears, you know, so I mean a wild card berth is, you know. You know, but I mean, are we going to be able to get in an eight and nine? I mean, three and five, you, 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 you know, you got a little bit better of a heartbeat, you know, three and five, you know, and you, you know, I, I forgot what we, hold on. What do you got here? If we win 500, is there, could be, could be. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. New York Giants schedule. All right, here we go. Nine, I know we got to play. Yeah, I mean, you know, you start looking at some of this. I mean, it's like, Obviously, it's one game at a time. You just can't start. Oh, we got this. We're going to win that game. And, you know, but we got the Jets. You know, winnable. On the road against the Raiders. Yeah, it's, it's winnable, right? Uh, on the road against the Cowboys. You know, once again, you know, that's why they play the games, right? You, you know, you don't want to chalk up anything, obviously, as a automatic loss. But, you know, we have a hard, hard time beating the Cowboys. Although last year, you know, but, you know, both games, we were beating the Cowboys in the third quarter. We just couldn't 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 get it done. But um, let's see here. Okay, then you got the Commanders, then you got the Patriots, then you got the Packers, then you got the Saints. Yeah, you know, it's four, you know, and then as you know, well, I said, okay, so we got the Jets, the Raiders. The Commanders, the Patriots, the Packers, the Saints, and, and then you, then you throw the, um, of course, then you throw the uh, the Cowboys in there. So six out of your next seven games, you know, winnable. I'm certainly not saying oh, pfft, chalk them up, baby. We're the Giants. We're winning them all. But six out of the next seven are winnable. See is up for good. And it, you know, um, the Browns line Super Bowl. Browns got good defense. I tell you what, <laughs> got good defense. And I tell you what, boy, if the Lions make it, cool. God bless them. anybody but the Eagles. Anybody but the Eagles. You know, uh, and, and, you know, 
Although it's going to be, uh, I'm, I got to disagree with you. I mean, because the, the Eagles, it's it's the Eagles and the refs versus whoever, whoever. It is. So this week it's the, it's the refs and the Eagles versus the commanders. The following week it'll be, oh, that the following week, it'll, you know, they're bringing, probably going to bring more refs in for the following week. They're probably going to have like double the amount of refs for the next week is the next week to play the Cowboys. So there's going to be like 25 refs on the field, the Eagles versus the Cowboys the following week. Cause you know, that's the only way to, I mean, some of those calls were just an absolute joke. Unbelievable. Absolute trash. Oh, I, 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 I can't even talk sometimes looking at that kind of garbage. Absolute garbage. Garbage calls. I can not believe it. Oh yeah, me too. Oh yeah, I'm the. Oh, I'm, I'm a happy, happy camper. Absolutely. Oh, and what's great was because the Diamondbacks that were down, you know, it was three to two, the final two games here are here in Philly, and I'm like, there's no way they're going to win fi- the final two games. But oh yeah, they pulled. Oh man, I love it. Absolutely love it. I loved it last year when the Phillies lost in the in the world series they got no hit i love it absolutely absolutely freaking love it um but what you're saying i mean these you know six and the next seven games are winnable you know win the i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. even the cowboys something i mean, whatever I mean, Dak prescott gets hurt you know uh, micah parsons gets hurt abcd lamb gets hurt but 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 whatever we get thomas back we get michael schmitz back everybody else kind of stays out there Hey, it could be a different ball game. You don't know. That's why they play the games, right? Um, but, you know, if you start looking, you know, this is the soft part of our schedule. You know, um, but this is this is a huge – I mean, obviously, they're all huge. Last week was oh, huge because if we went one and six, forget about it, right? If we go here, you can probably pretty much like – if we go two and six, you probably pretty much forget about it, right? So we got to go three and five. We got to try to keep, you know, one game at a time, building some confidence and all. Hopefully we can start getting maybe Andrew Thomas back. Um, I'm going to go over the injury report. Michael Schmitz is questionable, right? But Andrew Thomas is out once again. We should have one. They could have. Yep. Yep. Uh, man, yeah, I mean, I love that, you know. Tyrod drops back the pass. He throws the ball. Waller's in the end zone. Oh, it's off his hands. Incomplete. No, I wonder why he couldn't get the ball, huh? I wonder why, huh? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, but you also got to look at it, too, is that, you know, it is what it is. But let's not forget last year against the Commanders, right, in, in Washington, the last – one, no, it wasn't the last play, but it was, it was fourth down or whatever it was. They threw the ball in the end zone. Darnay Holmes was literally, literally raping the guy. I forgot who it was. It's, I don't know if it was Samuel or who, who. I forgot who it was. But he got the guy pregnant. He was he was literally impregnating him as the ball was coming to him. You can see him. He was gyrating behind it. You know what I mean? And they didn't call a flag on that. I mean that one I think was even worse than 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 this. I mean this this was, you know, that was a hand, you know, New Jersey. I was, so that was like this, but Holt was like, you know, I think his I think his had his legs wrapped around them, and I mean, I mean, I'm like, yeah, you didn't, yeah, you didn't call penalty, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll take it, you know. So it is what it is. Oh, the commanders, yeah, their O line is. I feel sorry for Howell. Man, my goodness. <laughs> that poor guy. I mean, he doesn't stand a chance back there. He, he drops back to pass. And I mean, before he knows it, like half the defense is in the backfield trying to rip his head off. He looks like Daniel Jones back there. I mean, I feel sorry for the guy. I mean, I, I don't know how the guy is going to survive a whole season like that. You know? Yeah, I feel bad for him. But, you know, that, that hopefully that will bid well for the Giants when we play them again because if their offensive line stunk a couple weeks ago, hopefully it'll stink in a couple weeks when we got to play them again. Right. Uh, but we're going to, we got to, we got to score some more points. We can't, we, we can't beat everybody three to two. It's, it can't be a baseball game. We got to score some. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We got, uh, we, so we scored what two touchdowns in the past, you know, two weeks. 
Um, we were 0 for 5 against Buffalo in the, the red zone. I mean, you know, I mean, my God. You know, and of course, in Saquon, he, he fumbles the ball down deep, and then Graham, you know, misses a field goal. You know, I mean, but I said, you know, we got we have to put up some more points than uh, you know, just two touchdowns. You know, this game here might be like if if you know, I don't know if anybody's even going to get to <laughs> to ten. You know, I mean, it, this one could be a this one could be a, a real slobber knocker here. Uh, what the Giants can't do is they can't. Um, you know, they can't give it away. They got to be careful with those those turnovers, right? They got to be very good on special teams because the Jets are decent on special teams. So they got the Jets going to score. God bless them. They got to make them go 70, 80 yards down the field for a touchdown, right? Um, but it's it just uh, <laughs> this game here <laughs> could be a real slobber knocker. I like that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, the thing that the thing was with the, the microphone was, yeah, I was always kind of like, you know, I was always like, you know, talking like, you know, like like, like down here and all, you know. See, now I can like, you know, look. look. You know, I try to look at the screen. I'm supposed to be looking right there. That way, I'm looking at, looking at you. But I always wind up, I don't know, for whatever. I I I wind up looking at my face, and it, you know, so. But it's yeah, that at least this at least this way I can be more upright. You know, you know what I mean? I could be like, you know, like this and everything. I instead of sitting like down over here. Yeah, how's everybody going? Is the grid on here? How's it going? <laughs> you know, well, I tried to get like a Bluetooth something, a Bluetooth headset or whatever like that. So it seems to work pretty good. Yeah, and I said, plus I could be more upright and I feel a lot more comfortable. You know, I'm, I'm hunched over for like an hour talking over here like this. Yeah, yeah and the Giants this week, we're going to be playing the Packers and it looks pretty you know, after after like an hour of that, I'm like, oh, yeah, all right, you know. So I feel a lot better, I guess. Feels pretty cool. Oh, good. Oh, that's good too. That's good. I always gotta make sure every time before I start going live or whatever like that that I, I do I make sure I check make sure my the headset's actually working and everything because I tried it once or twice I think when I first got it. And I'm like, oh, it's got to work, you know. So I, I think there was one or two of the videos they did. I, I started it and I was talking, and I, I don't see any video. Uh, the, the the volume down at the bottom, you know, for the microphone. I'm like, oh, it's not working. So I always have every time before I go live, I got to make sure that I check it to make sure it's actually working, you know. Because every now and then it's, I mean, because you you set up all, you know, set up all, you know, you get the the, the thumbnail there and all of this and everything, and I and I take. I take my uh, my YouTube video and I, I share it with like thirty other YouTube uh, uh, YouTube groups, Facebook giant groups. I share it with all of them, so that's like 10, 15 minutes to do that. So I do all this stuff and everything, and then you go live and it, and you don't check your microphone and you start talking and and, it, and the microphone's not working. I'm like, what the? F-? So then you have to cancel out of that, create another video. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like what the heck, you know? So so at least audio is cool. That's good. That's good. So <laughs> it, it doesn't do much good if you can't hear me. <laughs> Did you hear about the banks on the radio up here? The ba- about banks. Now, yeah, what's going on? Was he was he was he talking or was it people talking about him? Oh, oh Carl Banks. Oh, I thought you meant Deontay Banks. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. The the, the morons cut him off. Oh my god! Yeah, I did something. Was it last night? I did that. I think I did a video. Uh, well, that was part of my video. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was last night. WFAN hangs up on Carl Banks. Yeah, that was part of there. Yeah. I mean, my God, you know, I mean, when you know, when a guy's talking, you just shut up and you just listen. I mean, you know, some of those guys think that they're like God's gift to the world and stuff like that and everything. I mean, if you're lucky enough to have Carl Banks on there talking to you, I mean, shut the up and listen. I mean, my God. Jeez. I all a fan of my book, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, um, you know, I, you know I, I'm sure he'll probably, unfortunately, never get in, but I, I said this on my video last night. I said, if you ever check out the, the 1986 divisional round where the Giants are playing the 49ers, the, you know, it's the first round, the, the 49ers, we beat them 49 to 3. Um, Pat Summerall and John Madden are doing the game as they always do. There's at least two times during the game, right? Now we got to remember, you know, Joe Montana was on the field until he got knocked out by Jim Burt. 
but Jerry Rice is on the field. Lawrence Taylor's on the field. You know, so you got like the best wide receiver of all time on the field. You got the greatest defensive player of all time on the field. You have one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time on the field. You know, you got some pretty good players on the field, needless to say. And at least two times John Madden said that Carl Banks was the best player on the field because they couldn't run to his side. He, you know, um, you know, he, he, he set the edge. He was, you know, he, multiple times said, I think Carl Banks is the best player on the field. You know, he said it multiple times. So when John, when John Madden says something like that, that's, you know, that's saying something, you know. And, uh, you know, Carl Banks is, you know, he, I mean, he, he gave it his all. He, he gave it his all. I mean, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he 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 could set an edge. Let me tell you what, boy, it was tough getting around him. Unlike some some of what we do to, sometimes nowadays. I mean, like you know, like they hand the ball off and there's like nobody on on the edge there. They just run around outside and they get all kinds of yardage. But um, yes, yeah, so to my my you know to me he's a he's a hall of famer. I think because he maybe he maybe he got overlooked by um by with Lawrence Taylor. Sometimes maybe he didn't get as many accolades as he should have because there was some good. I mean, if you look at like the New Orleans Saints, they're off them, their offensive line, they're they're they linebackers back then with with uh, you know the, the the ones that they had. I mean, they had some they had some really good linebackers. So I mean, maybe he got overlooked. Maybe that's some of the reason why maybe he didn't make as many Pro Bowls or All Pros as he should have or could have or would have or whatever. You know, so we, you know he got overshadowed by Lawrence Taylor. You know, um, so he maybe he didn't get as many accolades as he should have. But I mean, two time Super Bowl champion. I'll tell you what, boy, I, he can make a play on my team anytime. He was to us what Dent and Marshall were like to the Bears in the 46. Yep. You know. So, yeah, but I, I, yeah, I was, that was funny. That was really, really funny. But um, actually, actually hanging up on him, hanging up on him. I tell you what I said. I might. I said I'd never do it. You know, hang up on me, but I tell you what, I'll never do another show for you, morons. I mean, what a what a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right. Oh, jeez. Here we go. All right. Here we go. All right. So Jones is out, and Brightwell's out. So that's why they brought they 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 got Corbin back. So we got we got, we should have Corbin right, uh, Brita. And we got Barkley, right? Because Gray is on injured reserve, Brightwell with his hamstring. So, but Jones is out once again. Brightwell's out. Doubtful. So, good chance he's probably not. Andrew Thomas, maybe the following week, maybe against the Raiders. Right? That wouldn't be bad. But then, of course, questionable. Questionable, Michael Schmitz. Okay. All right. I'll deal with that. Evan Neal. So basically, we got three starting offensive linemen that might not, you know, the two tackles and the center. We may not wind up playing once again. Uh, let's see, because Evan Neal, he's questionable with his ankle. Darren Waller, his hamstrings. So you know, with that, you don't know if it's that you know they're they're just limiting him because they don't want to aggravate that the hamstring that you know could possibly get aggravated if they overwork him. And it's the same thing with. Um, uh, you know, some of these other guys like with uh, well, they give Leonard Williams his uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Wandell Robinson. They give him seem to give him like a, a day off or so because of his knee, or they limit him in part to limited participation in some practices maybe during the week because of his knee. So, same thing with Darren Waller, they got him as questionable, but I hope he plays. <laughs> he plays. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau with his knee, he's questionable on a Dory Jackson with his neck. Ugh. Yeah, we could, we can, you know, we could use him. But once again, unfortunately, Daniel Jones is out. But, you know, I, you know, I, I don't I, tough to say, unfortunately, Daniel Jones is out. Tyrod's been doing pretty well. <laughs> so, you know, um, but then, let's see here. Mark Lewinsky. I tell you what, talking about doing it like a like a like a, a, a three sixty. I mean, it says it was but just G Men HQ frustrated 
New York Giants lineman has been an absolute beast the past two games. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, boy. He has done a 360 big time. Mark Lewinsky, just what in the world is Bobby Johnson doing with his offensive lineman? Whatever the New York Giants O-line coach has done since after the loss to the Dolphins, let's hope he keeps on doing more of the same. Despite plenty of shifting, we've seen a huge improvement with the guys up front. Among the notable playmakers who have stepped up their level of play has no question, but right guard Mark Lewinsky in the 14-7 win over the Commanders on Sunday. Number 64 was a monster up front protecting Tyrod Taylor and opening up holes for Saquon Barkley. We've got to give this guy his props. Absolutely. Because when hey man, I was I was I was I was right, I was I was I was like right in the front. I was I was right in the front of the uh, you know the train or whatever you want to call it, just throwing trash at this guy. Get him out of here. But you got to give the man some props. He said Mark Lewinsky in the last two games, 79 pass blocking snaps, one pressure allowed, no sacks. That's protection for you guys. Mark Lewinsky has been a sensational for the New York Giants over the past two games. According to pro football folks, Mark Lewinsky has allowed only one pressure and zero sacks and 79 pass blocking snaps combined, at least six and seven. Yeah, that's freaking unreal from the six foot four, three and ten pounder. Remember how bad Lewinsky looked in week one versus the Cowboys. Oh, yeah. So let's go to week one versus the Cowboys. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. Here we are. Mark Lewinsky. His pass block grade was a one. He gave up, according to PFF. Now, you go to different, you know, you know, they, they might have, he might have eight. Somebody else might have him with the 10 or whatever, but PFF. He had three sacks, a, a hit, five hurries, a partridge in a pear tree, and he gave up a grand total of nine pressures. Five hurries, a hit, and three sacks. His pass block grade was a one. Actually, I've seen a couple of the Giants with, with zeros this year, but uh, he, he had a one. His pass block grade was a one. But since that time, now let's not also forget, he got benched for a game too. But tell you what, his one game against the, 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 the Cowboys with a one, now, I, I think he, he got – I think week three, I think it's when he got benched because week two against the Cardinals, he played 37 snaps. He's, his pass block rate was a 78.8. But since he, he came back, he plays in, he played in weeks four, five, six, and seven. So week four against Seattle, 77.6 pass block rate. Week five against the Dolphins was a 53.2. That was not good for uh, probably much, much of anybody. That's, of course, when Daniel Jones got hurt and all that. Right? But against Buffalo, week six, at Buffalo, 74.4 pass block rate. This past week against Washington, that fearsome foursome that they got. Pass block rate, 83.3. Against the Fab Four from the Commanders, he gave up no sacks, no hits, no hurries, nothing. He gave up one hurry against the Buffalo in the Buffalo game. Uh, against Washington, it was a 73.6 overall. Now, his run blocking has not been super-duper spectacular, but, I mean, you know, Giants do a lot of passing. His pass blocking grade has is, is, is been taken almost like a, a total 360. I mean, unbelievable what the heck he's done. Phew. Man. Oh, yeah, Tierney. Tierney and Lakata, or whatever, like Lakata, Lakata, whatever his name is. Why well, whatever happened to Tiki Barber? It was Tiki and Tierney. And I used to like it because not so much because of tyranny, but because of Tiki. You know, because when you listen to Tiki talk, you know, he's talking from experience. He's talking from knowledge. He has his own opinion. That's cool. But, you know, a lot of what he's talking about is stuff from the past that, that actually happened. The same thing with Carl Banks. Right? You know, as I said, you get some of these guys like 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 Licata or whatever. You know, I mean, I, you know, I'm sure they know a lot or else they wouldn't be on the show. But, you know, guys, you're not. Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? When somebody's of that statue is talking to you, shut the up and listen to what they got to say because they know more about the game than you do. And it's like he's trying to explain like what's going on out there and you know, with, with, with Thibodeau and all that stuff and everything. As he's trying to talk and everything like that, these two freaking morons are, are like trying to talk over Carl Banks. It's like, shut up. What, what, you know, what, the, what the is wrong with you guys? Are you that stupid? A bunch of morons. 
Tiki is on the afternoon show. Ah, okay, okay. Did, did I mean what? I mean what? What happened? Did did, did he did, did 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 he want to switch? Did they have to switch him or? Because just Tiki and Tierney just had a little nice little ring to it, you know. And I said I don't know where this Lakata guy came from. You know, I don't know. Who, I don't know who that is. <sighs> But I mean, Glowinski, I'll tell you what. He is. Now, we're going to need it. And the other thing about Glowinski is that, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, unlike all the other guys that we, we, we pretty much had on the offensive line, right, you can pretty much say everybody else. Injuries, right? Not Kowinski. Last season, 1,169 snaps. Right? Um, this season, so far, 350. But he, he, he only played half Arizona's game. And he got benched. And, and, and he only played like half of Seattle's game. That's probably because we needed him on. The, because because every time we snapped the ball, another one of our offensive linemen basically dropped dead to the ground. We had to drag him off the field. So after after we had to drag three or four dead carcasses of our offensive linemen off the field because they got injured, Glowinski had to go in there. But Glowinski also got benched for week three, too. So he's been in there for 350 snaps. But, you, you know, i tell you what, between last season and this season so far, the guy – and I said, hey, please – Let's knock on wood. I don't want to jinx nobody. I don't want to jinx anybody getting injured, period. But the guy, is, guy has been healthy, which is unlike anybody else on our offensive line. He's been, you know, he's done a huge turnaround, and um, he's, he's been healthy. I mean, let's see. With Glowinski uh, and the rest of the offensive line doing the job, the Giants are now two and five on the year. Glowinski and company were forced against the commanders, and that will need to be the case once again versus the Jets this Sunday afternoon. Fans will be calling for Glowinski to be released not long ago. Well, that was me. Yep. But goodness, that's no longer the case. Now, you know, uh, you know, now now we yeah, you know, now you start looking, now you start thinking. It's like, my God, you know. Um, you start thinking about Glowinski, it's like you know, we got him for another season. We got him on the under contract for three seasons, one more season. Do we let him go? Hmm. Because you know, you know, to let him go, maybe make room for McKeith and the Zudu, right? Right. I mean, that makes some sense to me, right? So we want to have Thomas, want to have a Zudu, want to have uh, maybe keep Bredesen, maybe Bredesen and the Zudu battle it out for the guard, or maybe McKeith or something like that. You got John Michael Schmitz, you got Evan Neal. Do we want it? Do we want to keep Glowinski? Hmm. I mean, the guy's been healthy. Now all of a sudden, the guy's playing like a rock star. Do we want to let him go? We, we all. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Let's see. All in there. Is that it? All right. Let's see here. What do we owe him? Twenty twenty four. What do we owe him next season? Find him. 5.1 is his, his base salary. He's got a sign-in bo prorated bonus of 1.5 million, and then a non-prorated bonus of 600,000. So it's 7.2 million dollars next season. But he's 32. Wait a minute, 32. Hold on, let's see here. Yeah, he'll be 32 next season. So. That'd be interesting. He, he, yeah, he just might by default. He might have to be one of the cuts the Giants might have to make. But I mean, you know, got to start thinking. Do they now that they want to let him go? Guys, put, doing pretty good. He stays healthy. Do we want to let this? I mean, you know, now you have a known commodity. The guys, you know, for the most part, stays healthy. Seems to be doing pretty good. Do we want to let him go and save some money? It looks like we're going to save about five million dollars if we let him go. And, and and give a zoo to a McKeithen and all, you know, maybe we draft somebody who, who knows, you know, do you want to let those guys in there? You know, because I mean, that's one of the problems that the Giants have in the past. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, when you have a known commodity on the offensive line, you know, like, like Zeitler, right? We let him go, I think, for like for cap 
purposes or whatever it is, but then he goes and he winds up doing well with another team. And meanwhile, the Giants offensive line stinks after we let Ken Seitler go. Yeah, so do we want to let Kalowinski go? Hmm. Oh, he, oh, okay, gotcha. He replaced uh, Joe Benigno. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, Benigno, he's been there forever. My goodness. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, Francesca, and he – that's his Francesca, whatever his name is. I think he needs to retire. He's been, he, he's a grumpy old man. Let me tell you what, one grumpy old dude. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> but the Giants, so I mean, they got, you know, they got, they got some interesting things coming up here. Do they want to, you know, let him go or, or, or what for next season? But then that also brings me up to my next point. And you got Glowinski. Are the Giants short on cash? Well, for the rest of the season, yeah. Yeah, uh, because Patty Train, if you listen to her, Locked On Giants, she was talking about this. She went to over the cap, said the Giants have $1.394 million for the rest of the season. So basically for more than half the season, we got like half the season left. We have like $1.4 million which is not even enough to sign, bring like two guys onto the practice squad, I guess, I, I, or, or two more guys onto the, the, the roster or whatever. Because I think the minimum salary is like seven, seven fifty or something like that. But we don't have enough money for that. So if we incur a couple more injuries, we're, we're in trouble. So the Giants are going to have to do something, right, to try to get at least a couple more million dollars to help get them through the rest of the season. I mean, unless they're going to try to get down on their knees, Joe Shane, before he goes to bed, Sweet dear baby Jesus, please, let's not have any more injuries for the New York Giants the final nine games of the season, please. Thank you, sweet dear baby Jesus. You know what I mean? That's not happening. So the Giants are going to have to do something. So what Patty Train was talking about, she said, kind of don't be surprised if, because she was saying, she also brought up too, it's kind of like um, with, the, with the Giants, they were saying, it's like, well, if the Giants – lose this weekend and the two and six, the playoffs are pretty much out of question. Look, maybe not a fire sale, but pretty much look for them to maybe to, to move a guy probably definitely. Right. Well, she's like, well, that may not be the case. I mean, even if the giants win and they're three and five and they're right back in that wild car hunt, right. Crazy as it sounds three and if, if, if we win, Three and five, three and five, we're right back in. I mean, crazy as that sounds, right? She was also bringing up that there might, might be a chance that before the the trade deadline, which I think she said four o'clock on Halloween, ooh, ooh, right, October thirty first. Look, the Giants might have to maybe do something, you know, maybe trade either that or they might have to do something in which they, they don't want to do, which would be like with Leonard Williams' contract. Right, maybe give him a sign and bonus, kick some of his money down the road, add it on the next season as some dead money because the pot might let it well let him go, or maybe something with a Dory Jackson or something like that. And you know, they're gonna have to weigh it out because they got one point about four million, one point four million for the rest of the season. So that may not get it done. So even if they win or lose, Patty Trainer was talking about this, you know, say they're even three and five, they might have to try to move somebody. Maybe, as I said, she, she even said maybe because uh, Leonard Williams is getting almost a million dollars a, a game because his base salary is like 18 million, I think it is. So so he's owed about eight or nine million for the rest of the season. So it's about a million dollars a game. So they, she was also saying that a team that might want to get Leonard Williams his services for the rest of the season, the Giants might have to maybe split it, just meaning – the Giants might have to pay $4 million of his salary for the rest of the season, and the team that he's going to get might have to pay $4 million. So the team they're going to get might give us a seventh-round pick, just throwing a number out there. Um, they'll get Leonard Williams. They'll take $4 million of his salary. The Giants maybe take $4 million of his salary, and, it, and they'll get a seventh-round in return or maybe a sixth. It, it ain't going to be nothing crazy. Um so that might, but it's, but still, that would free up another four million dollars for the Giants. So instead of the Giants now having one point four million, they might have five point four million, which would be should be plenty to get them through the rest of the season. 
right, without making any big splashes as far as trading for Jerry Judy or somebody like that. Or, you know, I mean, that should be all for their basic needs that you get through the rest of the season. Or she also mentioned about maybe Dory Jackson, but she also brought up with a Dory Jackson because he's got a problem with his neck. That might be a kind of a hard thing to, hey, you want hey, you want our, uh, I know, <laughs> our number one cornerback? I mean, he's got a problem with his neck. He may not be able to play ever again. <laughs> We may not be able to play the rest of the season, but you, you think you might want him? <laughs> yeah, so that could complicate things. But she was bringing up that there's a, you know, there's a possibility that regardless of the Giants win or lose this Sunday, they might have to maybe do something with one of their players and not have to move them. Either that or there might be a possibility where they have to, you know, um, give somebody a sign-in bonus and kick some of their money down the road, which Joe Shane probably would prefer not prefer not to. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, regardless, win or lose, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, once again, the Giants don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of draft capital. So I don't know if they're going to want to be uh, buyers, right, um, at the, the trade deadline. Although there was some, some you know, some tempt, you know, like, like with the, the Broncos. I've seen they got like almost like a fire, like Patrick Sertan. Whew. One more time for the hearing impaired. In case you didn't hear that, right? I mean, if you're going to let a Dory Jackson go, you got Patrick Sertan coming in, and then maybe you have, you know, Patrick Sertan, you got uh, Tay Banks, right? And also Jerry Judy, maybe. You know, I don't know so much about Jerry Judy, but but there's some guys out there that some teams might, might want it, but I don't know if the Giants are going to wind up doing something like that. But interesting to see, but, you know, you know by 4 o'clock on Tuesday, we'll find out. It's going to be very, very interesting to say. I've contributed on Joe's podcast. Oh, have you? Joe Benega? Oh, yeah, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Now, what, what do you do? You got to call in or something? What do you do? On the pain down in the Hackensack with former Joe Bruce Harper. Okay. Just a little suck. Oh, of course. <laughs> But on Joe's podcast, Joe Benigno's podcast, you um, what do you, what do you I don't know, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you call in, or what do you, what do you, uh, you text them, you email them, or what, what do you do for that? Because yeah, I mean, he's yeah, he's been on. My goodness, call in, yeah, oh yeah, that's cool. Well, it's like with the Big Blue Kickoff Live; they go live every. I think I, I don't even know. I always watch it on YouTube, so I never catch them live. I don't I don't watch any pod, listen to any podcast. I always catch them on. Talk to Giants, yeah. But I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like Big Blue Kickoff Live. I think like twelve o'clock or one o'clock they got they had their podcast, but then they they upload it to YouTube, and that's when I watch it, like around four o'clock in the afternoon or so. That's when I watch it. But yeah, you know, people call in there, you know, and and ask questions and everything. Oh, you broke his balls, yeah. Well, because he loved, doesn't he love Joe Namath? I, th I think he's a big. Big Joe Namath fan. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you got to feel, I mean, you know, sometimes you got to feel, just remember how lucky we are, right? Because, I mean, we've actually seen, you know, some Super Bowl wins. You know, I mean, I'm sure he, he's old. So I'm sure he was alive and he saw us, you know, he's seen Joe Namath. So I'm sure he's remembered Super Bowl three. But that's it, brother. I mean, that's it. I mean, it's like, what, 55 years ago. I mean, <laughs> you know, and they haven't even been to a Super Bowl since then. You know, I mean, I mean, geez, they've been to some championship games, but they haven't been to a Super Bowl since then. I was a former communications here. Oh, cool. Bro, broke his balls. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, some of them Jet fans. Uh, so, that was, that was always my second favorite team growing up, you know, because I remember my, my my father used to watch them because when we were in Long Island, what the hell was it? Channel 2 was one of them and Channel 4 was the other. I can't remember if the Giants run 2 and the Jets run 4 or the Jets run 2 and the Giants run 4. I can't I can't remember, but I remember you got the dial of the TV. We, you know, the Giants were on one on, on at 1 o'clock and the Jets were on at 1 o'clock. You know, we had – he had Channel 2 on for a little while, and then he would switch it to Channel 4. I wanted to watch the Giants, but he he, he watched them both. He watched the Giants and the Jets. So we'd, 
we had the Giants and whatever, the Cowboys on at 1 o'clock for a little while. Then he would switch it to Channel 4. Then the Jets would be playing the Dolphins. Then he'd switch it back. And usually, of course, because back then in the 70s, both teams stunk, especially the, the Jets and the Giants. Uh, that yeah, I mean, usually, yeah, I mean, it was just, yeah, he'd, he'd watch a little bit, watch, he'd train it, watch a little bit, and both teams would be losing. <laughs> then, 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 of course, he'd be pissed off. He'd want to turn the TV off. All right, come on, let's go outside. Come on, let's go. No, Dad, I don't want to watch football. No, let's go. Let's go outside. You know, and so sometimes I got screwed, but he yelled at me a few times. My second team was the original Brownies because of uh, Bernie Kozar. Oh, yeah. And Marty. Oh, Marty, yeah. Yeah, well, Marty was, um, I think it was, was our, it was our linebacker coach, I think it was, back in, was it 75 or 76 or somewhere around there? You look at some of the, look at some of the videos and stuff like that. You'll see Marty Marty Schottenheimer walk uh, on the sideline for the New York Football Giants. Oh yeah, let him go. Yeah, I mean, good, good, real good coach. I mean, you know, I think we might have been talking about this before. Um, you know, just he never could win in the playoffs, but some of it wasn't his fault. You know, like you know. Could he could he could he have been the twelfth man on the field for the drive to stop John Elway? Just gotta stop him. He had to go 98 yards. You couldn't have stopped him. Was it 98 and a half yards? Or whatever, you know? Or was it Ernest Biner with the fumble? That you know, I mean, the, the dude comes in from the side, and just pokes the ball out. I can't remember the guy's name, but he was he he, he, he was like running, he's like, I, I'm not gonna I can't tackle the guy because I'm coming from the side and Ernest Biner's going this way toward the end. So I can't I, I can't tackle him. So he's like, I think he said the only hope I got was knocking the ball out. He knocked the ball out. Broncos got it. First and ten the other way. Game over. Right? Was he was he there? To, you know what I mean? But you know, I mean, sometimes but then they had such a great season. I remember with the, the, the Chargers. I think they had like two losses one year and they got to the play and they, they wound up losing. You know what I mean? So but he was good coach. Boy, very, very good coach. They drive and the fumble. That's it. Now it wasn't at water. I, don't, I can't remember. It was, it was some no-name guy. It wasn't Steve Atwater. Guy came from the side. I can't remember what, what his name was. Um, if you look up Wikipedia or something like that, yeah, maybe it'll have it. Maybe you'll type in the fumble or something, whatever. I don't know. But it'll, it'll, it'll say the guy, but it wasn't Atwater. He just, yeah, I mean, just, some of it just wasn't his, it wasn't necessarily his fault, but he was good, good coach, especially during the regular season. Really good. I always felt sorry for him. <laughs> he was a very good coach. All right, and then I seen this here from Nick Filato, right? Because he, he always does a real good job. Real, real in depth and detailed and all that says, what to expect when the Giants had the ball. Well, let's see. Says the up the Giants upset was sparked by the vaunted Jets defense when 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 the um, the, the 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 Jets upset the, the Eagles. Head coach uh, Robert Sala and defensive coordinator Jeff uh, Olbrich forced four turnovers and harassed Philadelphia quarterback Jalen Hurts all game. Oh yeah, he he, he was just like the, the pressure they got. It was just amazing, like he. I mean, especially from seeing like an eagle offensive line, Hurts getting the ball and like standing in the pocket for like a second or so, and all of a sudden it's just like collapsing on him. To see that an eagle filled up the eagle offensive line play like that was like shocking. But um, the star quarterback threw three interceptions, including one in the final two minutes that resulted in an eight yard touchdown run by Brees Hall. Philadelphia was able to exploit vulnerabilities in the, their cover for defensive structure. <clears throat> so basically, I think they they like to um, maybe play deep, give you stuff underneath, but you're not going to beat them deep. But there was stout defense on early downs, forced the Eagles into uncomfortable third down situations. The Jets were without their top two cornerbacks, though, Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed in week six. Both were in the concussion protocol, but both of them, I think, cleared concussion protocol and will be playing this weekend against the Giants. Um, the Jets' defensive is, is explosive and physical athletes across the board, and they got a lot of guys that can rush the, the, the passer, a lot of guys. It's just not like the four. 
you got the front four, and then they let those guys take a breather, and they bring some other guys on the field that can rush the passer as well, too. Let's see. The Jets rank 13 in points allowed per game, but they allow 13, they're 13th in points allowed per game. But once again, it's the theory of relativity. Everything's relative. If you have a better offense and your offense is on the field, completing passes, running, scoring points, and this, that, and the other thing, and your defense is on the sideline drinking Kool-Aid, how many points per game is your defense giving up? None. Unless they're, unless, unless they're throwing pick sixes or something like that. So if their offense was better, they'd have the ball maybe longer, score maybe more points, and maybe therefore the defense might be giving up less points. Uh, the 24th in yards per game allowed, 351.8. So, you know, they can you know, they give up some yards. But then again, the Giants don't necessarily gain a lot of yards. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, it's, it's funny because the Giants give up 351.4 yards per game. The Jets give up 351.8. <laughs> Jets have allowed 135.2 rushing yards per game. So that could be huge for Saquon. Huge. So they're 135 yards per game given up, which ranks 26th in the league. The Giants are 27th with an average of 137.3. So the Giants run defense hasn't gotten Immensely better since last year, especially since we added Nacho, right? We got Okarake, we got Ashawn Robinson. Leo's healthy for the most part. That Dexter Lawrence, uh, he's healthy. So the, 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 the Jets get the good pressure, but they only blitz at a rate of 18.3%, which is ranks 31st in the league. So they basically blitz fewer than anybody, any other teams out there. The Giants are now third in the blitz rate with a 41.6 clip. Despite the low blitz rate, the Jets pressure the quarterback at 28.5% rate. That ranks third in the NFL. So they get they 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 uh, pressure the quarterback 28.5% of the time, which is the third highest. And you take that also fact that they blitz the second least. Now, once again, it says this is a scary statistic. The Giants' offensive line is going to, yeah. I mean, that's this is where you're going to need Tyrod to really take care of that ball, right? Obviously, you don't want him to take three steps and then crumble down to the ground every 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 other play because he 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 he'd rather take a sack on him. But you know, when he throw when he lets go of that ball, he's got to make sure it's 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 either going incomplete or it's going through a giant. Can't give the Jets a short field. Can't do it because points are going to be at a premium for this game. The Jets also have the fourth best red zone touchdown percentage in the NFL, which is at 36 points. And you couple that up with the fact that the Giants can't score in the red zone. I mean, you know, that's some scary stuff right there. Edge defender Bryce Huff ranks seventh in the NFL in pressures with 34. Uh, John Franklin Myers ranks 23rd with 26. Quinnen Williams who will be a major problem for the Giants in this game, has 25 pressures. Quinton Jefferson has 13 pressures, leads the team with three sacks. Huff has two and a half sacks. Williams and Johnson have two. Johnson is an oppressive young prayer, uh, player, has 14 pressures. They got a lot of guys who can get not, not so much maybe a ton of sacks, but they just get pressure, make, make you throw the ball fast, get it out of your hands, maybe throw it where you don't want to, maybe make a mistake. Jets lead the league in hurry percentage with a 14.2% hurry rate. The next closest team is at 11.6%. Jets force the sixth lowest yards per attempt, which is in part due to their two high shells, their, their safeties. And then he says their off leverage system, which force throws underneath when compounded with their ability to get after quarterbacks. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of those, the, um, you know, Taylor's going to have to come back. He's, a lot of it's going to be uh, underneath. You know, you know, they were kind of talking about this on Big Blue Kickoff Live. They were kind of hoping that maybe somebody might be shadowing or, you know, following Sa Saquon. So maybe Saquon goes out, out of the backfield, maybe rolling out to the flat. Maybe they might have a linebacker or somebody coming with them, right, opening up the maybe the, the middle of the field there, maybe where Darren Waller might be, uh, you know, have, have a nice size game. Again, maybe get some uh, some some um, some receptions. 
Let's see it. They have the fifth. The Jets have the fifth best interception interception percentage at three point seven percent. The Jets allowed four point four yards per carry on the ground, but have only surrendered two touchdowns. So they, that means they tighten up in the red zone, but give almost four and a half yards a carry. So you know this is where Saquon. They might have to keep feeding Saquon. You know, you have to feed him in the first quarter. And it's like, what are we doing? Saquon's got seven carries for ten yards. What the? What are we doing? Give him another seven carries in the second quarter. Maybe he might get fifteen yards. What are we doing? He's got fourteen carries for twenty-five. What is going? You know, what I mean, but you keep feeding him. And, you know, maybe the third and the fourth quarter, instead of him getting two yards of carry, now he might be getting four or five or six. So he might he might pop one. It says the Jets master rotating their personnel and giving opposing offenses different looks that are based on their skill sets of their players. Uh, Jordan Whitehead has three interceptions on the season. All, all three were in week one against Josh Allen and the Bills. Whitehead also leads the team with six passes defense. So, I mean, yeah, they, they're, they're, their safeties are very good. And they also, so their cornerbacks are very good, too. Tony Adams is coming off his best game of the season against Philadelphia. He played 70 snaps and came away with the interception at the end of the game. Um, they got Quinnen's older brother, Quincy Williams, who leads the team in tackles at linebacker with 60. Williams also has five passes defense. Former Baltimore Ravens linebacker C.J. Mosley has 59 tackles and looked excellent on film against the Eagles. So basically they're two inside linebackers, right? One's got 60 tackles, the other, and this is in six games because they had a bye week. So basically, they both average 10 tackles a game, right? Uh, you know, so, I mean, you know, they got you – know, it's, it's it's not going to be easy. They, they, Nick Falato here says the Giants game plan. First, they have to establish the run. I know we say this every week, yep. But the Jets defense has its issues stopping the run. However, they're stout up front. So execution with angles, yep, and anticipating the path of the Jets defenders at the snap is paramount when running power or counter, yep. The Jets stuff counters several times through the season, but gave up two explosive runs on the year when it was run. However, against the four three wide teams like the 49ers, the Giants abandoned their counter rushing attack and used more of a wham double trap run play that helped the Giants score with Matt Breed in week three. When I think it was an eight yard touchdown run he ran in. The Giants can pull this run off early in the game and may slow down the aggressive penetrating nature of the Jet, which is true, which is true. Instead of them just pinning their ear backs and, and at the snap and just rushing the quarterback, if you can get a couple runs, that's going to slow that pass rush down. The Giants carve Washington's base personnel package with their 12 personnel. The Jets will likely match the Giants' 12 personnel with a nickel 3-3-5 or a 4-2-5 look. Still, the Giants can find success with their quick passing attack out of the 12 personnel. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You got two tight ends there, something, something quick, yep. Especially from six plus man protection with Daniel Bellinger maybe staying in and helping the the five offensive linemen. Giants have taken advantage of uh, the cover four teams this season, not as much as we'd like to see, but the explosive play from Jalen High at week two obviously it was against a variation of cover four with a safety bit on Darren Waller's deep horizontal cross with proper t- protection. Now proper protection is key. The Giants can hopefully try to entice the deep for safety once again. He's got his uh, we've got final thoughts here. These are not this Jets of old. This is a well-coached team with a talented defense from top to bottom. I just imagine if they had Aaron Rodgers in there. They also lost um, like Mackay Becton. Um, what's the other guy? They have another. Um, there are there are other offensive linemen. I can't remember his name. He was a first-round pick. So, I mean, so they've, they've had some guys that they have the issues in the offensive line, right? But, I mean, I'm saying imagine that they had all their guys on the offensive line if they had Aaron Rodgers in there. You can imagine, you can, you're definitely looking at quite possibly a Super Bowl, you know, uh, aspirations for the Jets, certainly. Uh, the Jets defeated the Eagles without their top two cornerbacks and a backup quarterback. And they had a week of rest so the Giants can win this football game if they do two things. Force Zach Wilson to make mistakes. Don't make mistakes. And don't make mistakes on offense. Don't give him a short field. Don't give him a pick six. 
No strip sack fumbles where they pick it up and run it back for a touchdown. I know that's so easy to say and hard to do, but it's true. It's true, right? As Kurt Angle used to say. Giants have some momentum, and some of their starters may be returning. However, the Jets have a better roster than the Giants. But if the Giants execute on offense and pressure Wilson like they did Sam Howell, yep, then the Giants can win their third game of the season. But that's still a big, <laughs> big if. So true, Nick. So true. Nick Filato once again with some very good stuff there. 13-9. I got us winning 2-1. to one. I got the Jets kicking a, an extra point, no touchdown, and the Giants get a late safety. Sex, uh, sexy Dexy tackle Zach Wilson in the end zone late in the fourth quarter. The Giants win 2-1. to one. Yep, that's what I got. Shades of Hank Stram. So, you know, um, yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, I said, I mean, you certainly, I mean, without question, I mean, um, what is that? What is, I can't remember that there are other, damn, there are, there are other, uh, there are offensive linemen, but I mean, they had some offensive line guys injuries and Aaron Rodgers, you know what I mean? I mean? Just imagine with the defense that they got with Aaron Rodgers in there. I'm not saying they'd be the greatest show on turf, but with Aaron Rodgers flinging that ball around, I'd rather have him throwing the ball around than Zach Wilson. I mean, but uh, you can certainly see where the Jets, without question, would have some Super Bowl aspirations if, if uh, Aaron Rodgers was in there. You know, but they, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's good, good team, good, well coached. Um, it, Giants got to get some pressure on Zach Wilson. They got to make him make the mistakes. The, the thing the Giants got to their advantage here is that we, the two quarterbacks, the Giants quarterback experienced, good with the ball. Zach Wilson, not so experienced, can get flustered with the ball and is not as good as the with, with the ball, protecting the ball and all that as Tyrod is. So it's going to be huge, huge, absolutely. It's huge for both teams, you know, because, you know, um, well, let's take a look here. Let's take a look at the, let's see, NFL standings here. NFL standings. Let's go to the American Football Conference. All right, so you got, you know what I mean? So the Jets, if the Jets fall to three and four. All right. So you look, let's see here. In the AFC North, the Browns are four and two. The Steelers are four and two. The Ravens are five and two. The Jets are in third place. They're behind the Dolphins and the Bills. So if they go to three and four, I mean, it's still a ton of time left. Three and four, they still got 10 games to go. Anything can happen. And heck, I we were even talking about maybe Aaron Rodgers even coming back before the end of the season, for Christ's sake. But we'll have to wait and see. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they would fall what one, two, and then it would be three, four, five, six. So hold on, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There would be seven teams. If the Texans win, there would be eight teams. If the Raiders win, there would be nine teams ahead of the Jets. If the Jets were to lose and become three and four, there would be nine teams ahead of the Jets in, in, the, in the, the playoff race. The Jets would be 10th out of 16 teams. So, once again, they still got 10 games to go. There's a ton of time left to go. Anything can happen, all that stuff and everything. Uh, shades, right? the pitchers do. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for crying out loud, I mean, you're talking Christmas – I mean, we're, I mean, Christmas is, I think it's like another two weeks left in the season after Christmas, right? I mean, holy cow. So, I mean, he'll be rusty, you know, but I mean, he can, you know, at least maybe, I guess, maybe throw the ball or whatever, you know, but I'll have to wait and see. But, I, you know, I mean, I said, but the, this team certainly had, uh, you know, certainly playoff aspirations, if not Super Bowl, visions of Super Bowl. But so it's a big game for them, too. But I'm saying, but. If they lose this game, they're still, you know, I mean, they're, they're three and four. They still got 10 games left to go. If the Giants go to two and six, I mean, the season's not over. They still got nine games to go, but their playoff hopes are, they'd have to, you know, they'd have to, they'd have to win all the other games. They'd have to beat whatever the, the, the Saints, they'd have to beat the Rams, they'd have to beat the Packers, they'd have to beat the Patriots, they'd have to beat the Raiders, they would probably have to beat the, um, you know, the, uh, Maybe the Cowboys or the Eagles. You know what I mean? They'd have to win all of those other games. And then, you know, I mean, you know, if we couldn't, if we can't beat, oh, you have to, and then the commanders too would have to beat that. You know, I mean, so we lose this game. Just think of all the other games we almost have to win. 
you know, if you're a team that's two and six and you got, well, we got to win that. We have to win the next seven games or, you know, good luck there. You know, so that's a big game, big game. Oh yeah. Division sucks. <laughs> sucks. <laughs> so, all right. Well, hey, in five, hold on four, three, two, one. Boom. It's been one hour. All right. Hey, Jersey guys, good talking again, brother. We'll be back again. We'll have uh, more previews and we'll have my pre my pre well, I, I kind of said I said the Giants two to one. So give you a little give you a little inside uh, a preview. Two to one Giants. That's why I have the final score at. So we'll see you again tomorrow night, right? Same time, same bad channel. So whoever spent any time listening to me live, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or if anybody spends any time watching the replay, is once again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, it's three day. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants. Woo! Oh, yeah.